Okay, we're going to be talking about the three different types of systems and what happens for each one and how it relates to the Earth. So the first type of system we need to know is an open system. An open system, matter can go in and out. So air can go in and out. Air, solids, gases, people, whatever can go in and out. And energy can go in and out. Okay. And some of the vocab you need to know here, matter can go in, energy can go in or out. When it's going in, it's called an input. I'm not going to give you a definition, but you need to know an input is when matter or energy is going in. An output is the opposite. The systems are outputting matter or energy. Now, on the right side here, there is a diagram. And what we see going in might be matter. Matter can go in. Matter can come out. And energy can do the same. Energy in, energy out. All right, so it's open systems. You can have an exchange of energy and exchange of matter. All right, the other vocabulary I want you to know for systems, and we're just going to put it here underneath open systems, are internal processes. So if, let's say we have an open system like my classroom. People can walk in, people can walk out, hot air can walk, can waft in, energy can waft in, well, however. But the internal processes of this classroom are the things that happen only in this room. So if I light a candle in here, and that's releasing energy and, and consuming some oxygen and everything else, that's an internal process, which is a change in reaction that happened only inside the system. Okay, on to the second type of system. It's a closed system. Okay, now... You might think a closed system is just the opposite of an open system, where no energy goes in and out, no matter goes in and out, and you're close. A closed system, matter cannot enter and matter cannot leave. So a sealed plastic bag is a closed system, a, a sealed container of any type. But, well, no matter inputs and there are no matter outputs. However, there are energy inputs and energy outputs. Energy can go in, so you can have an input from energy or you can have an output of energy. So it's closed to matter, but energy can still flow in and out. Right. And for our diagram, a closed system, energy can go in and energy can come out. And that is all. Okay, so that's a closed system. The third type is an isolated system. This is what you would expect to be a closed system. Essentially an isolated system, no matter in or out, no energy in or out. An isolated system is going to be all by itself. So, an open system you have energy in and out, you have matter in and out. A closed system, there's only energy moving in and out. An isolated system has neither energy nor matter moving in or out. And some examples of these, then. Open systems. My classroom's an open system. A car engine is an open system. The human body is an open system overall. You have inputs, you have outputs of matter and energy. Now, closed systems, remember, closed systems still can have energy going in and out. Closed systems are like reactions in a sealed bag. So if I sealed up some baking soda and vinegar, shook it all up, the bag would feel hot. That's the energy leaving the bag. That's a closed system, however. The Earth, overall, is a closed system. Energy is going in and out, but matter overall is staying inside. Anywhere inside of a closed container is a closed system. Lastly, isolated systems. The universe is an isolated system. Energy can't leave the universe. Matter can't leave the universe, or vice versa. And the classic
chemistry example for an isolated system is inside of a thermos. So any heat that's built up inside of there or any coldness that stays inside of the thermos, that would be an isolated system. 